Okay. <laughs> I am not asking on behalf of these alone, but also for those who believe in me through their word, that they may be one, just as you are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you sent me. Amen. 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 Today's message is entitled, That All May Be One. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So we'll begin here with Praise eternal life. Jesus spoke these things and raising his eyes to heaven, he said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that the son may glorify you. Now, it says here that uh, he spoke these things. Now, these things basically refers to everything that he had said before in the Gospel of John, because now he's nearing the end of the, the, the book, and he knows that his he doesn't have much time left because uh, Judas has already went out of, of the, the um, gathering that they had, the Lord's Supper, where they had the, 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 the supper, and he had went out to deceive him and he he knew that that process was beginning and that he, he would be given over to those who would take his life he he knew very well he knew it was that time and so but at this point he's praying for his disciples he's praying for those who has followed him for the last three years and he's he's given them the word and now he's he's praying that the father would just just keep them as one, keep them together. Not only them, but those whom they would they would uh, uh, share his word with. And so, uh, let's move on to uh, the, the word glorify here. I want to just define it here. The original word is doxazo, uh, and it's in... Uh, and the definition is to render or esteem glorious in a wide application. And it's used in scripture to signify glorify, honor, bestow, glory on. And, and, and that is to basically to, to honor someone. And that's what Jesus is asking the Father to do is, is to glorify him and glorify uh, his disciples. And then in uh, verse two, it reads, just as you gave him authority over all mankind, so that to all whom you have given him, he may give eternal life. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Notice he said, this is eternal life, that they may know you. Now that knowing is, is really means in that word by definition means an, an intimate relationship with God. That's how no is expressed in, in the uh in, in the Greek language or the Hebrew language. No means that and that knowing God like a man would know his wife, everything that there is to know, uh there's a bond. And and that's the, the that's the eternal life that Jesus is saying that he wishes for his disciples to have with God, that they may know him. And now we go to glorified on earth, God's name revealed. Okay, and so in verse 4 of John 17, and Jesus goes on and say, I glorified you on the earth by accomplishing the work which you have given to me, given me to do. And now you, Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you 
before the world existed. Now, in this verse here, Jesus is saying to the Father, well, give me, give me that place, glorify me, bring back that relationship with us, between us, that we had before the, the, uh, the, the world was, that I had with you then. And uh, before I, I became in the flesh, before I came to this world here, and, and having a life in the flesh. I want that glory that we had together when it was just you and I, and we it was just a glorious relationship that we have. So bring me back to that. Bring me back to where you are. And we know that he was speaking here of heaven itself. Bring me back to you in that place. Verse six. I have revealed your name to the men whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours and you gave them to me and they have followed your word. Now they have come to know that everything which you have given me is from you. For the words which you gave me, I have given to them and they received them and truly understood that I came forth from you and they believe that you sent me. And so here, Jesus is saying, Father, I have, I have given him the, the thing, the words that you gave me. I, I have given him the message. I have revealed you who you are to them. I have, I have glorified your name. I have showed them who your, your name. And, um, uh, Let's move on to the next verse here. And it says, it comes from Exodus 3, verses 13 through 14. And this, this verse is going to bring to light some of the things that we're talking about in John. And, 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 and Jesus, of course, is saying that he, is, he has manifested his name. He's teaching the disciples the Father's name. And, um, and here... Uh, in Exodus 3, verses 13 and 14, it says, Then Moses said to God, Behold, I am going to the sons of Israel, and I will say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. Now they may say to me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, This is what you shall say to the sons of Israel, I am has sent me to you. Now, let's, let's look at the definition of this word I am because that's important here. Uh, this word haya. Haya is, is, is really a, a form of the, uh, it, it is the Hebrew to be verb. Just like our in in the English language, it would be it would be comparable to what is, what was, what is to come. So to fall out, come to pass, become, be something exists, and 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 that 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 is the, the meaning in in Hebrew. Now, of course, this is a verb, and and uh, so, but. The wonderful thing about this one, this one word here in the Hebrew construction of, of in their language, in in their grammar, this one word itself, it doesn't need is was will be. It doesn't need a, a, a past, present, and and future tense to express this word, but. The Hebrew language is capable of doing that with one word, and that's what haya is. It is it is the Hebrew to be verb, but yet that construction of now this is not the only ha or ya word in Scripture, like the word Yahweh itself is 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 which is we translate as Lord is similar to that. Now this word this this why what what looks like a why to you is a um, yod in Hebrew. Now, a yod in Hebrew can be 
sound as a Y or a W, either one. It just depends on the word itself. Now, in, in the word Yahweh, that that way, that that W is is this yo, it's a yod, it's expressed with a yod. And um so Yahweh is the name, the biblical name for Lord. It is now, since the reason that the main reason why it is now, because the he the, the Hebrews uh, they decide the Hebrew writers decided that the Lord's name when the, the, the uh in Exodus when in, in the Ten Commandments when when the Lord said do not take the Lord's name in vain well they they didn't uh when when they were writing the the the, the uh, on in the scrolls what what they would read in the temple they they felt that the Lord's name was too holy to be pronounced and 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 so they started out if you notice if if you read the Hebrew Bible during the first part of the Bible they was using that word uh, with with the uh, wise with, with with the uh the Yahweh but then they changed that name to uh Allah they, they changed the name another to another name for for Lord and and, and it wasn't Yahweh it was Allah's way or Allah I can't grasp it totally right now and uh, but they used another word so they wouldn't have to pronounce the word Yahweh because they felt that that word was too holy to pronounce and they didn't want to take it in vain. So they stopped using that word, even in the writings, even in the scrolls, they stopped writing it. But but let's go on. I, I was just I, I wanted to give you an understanding of the word Yahweh, but let's let's go on with with the message here. Okay, now we've we've just you we've read prior to that going on with Yahweh. We we were talking about Moses and God telling Moses his name was I am. And when you go to the Israelites in Egypt, tell them I am had sent you because that's my name. I am uh that that is uh Haya. It, it means I am. And it says in, but now let's get back to John. And and Jesus said he would he he would uh share his name. He would teach the uh he had uh taught the disciples his name. And so, and here's how he did it. In John 6 48, he said uh in his discourse on 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 the um bread of life here, they had just fed the five thousand, and after coming back over the ocean, and a group of, of men came and he said to Jesus. Um, Rabbi, how did you get here? How did you 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 come here so fast? And then Jesus said to him, "Surely, surely, I say to you, you you are not concerned about me, uh, be, because I I showed great signs or I did great miracles, but because you ate of the bread and you were filled." And he said, "Do not do not seek the bread that uh, um, just feeds the flesh." so to speak, uh, for lack of a better way of saying what he said, but the one that lasts till eternal life, which the Son of Man would give you. And then he went on to say, I am the bread of life. I, I am the bread of life. And Amen. so now in, in, in uh, John 8, 12, and when Jesus said, then Jesus again spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. The one who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And John 10, 7, so Jesus said to them again, truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. That is, I am the door. Amen. I am the door to the sheepfold. Jesus is the door to, to, to the Lord, to, to the, uh, to the church, really, the, the the sheepfold is is where his where we are, where we reside, uh, is is in the fold, and um, so 
and he is the door. You you can't get in except through him. Amen. And and in that same, the, that's the passage about the 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 uh, sheepfold. He goes on to say, not only that I am the door, I am the shepherd for the sheep. I'm the way to get in, and I'm the one that shepherds the sheep that when they come out. And I know my own, and my own know me. It goes on to say in, in uh, John 10, 14. Now in John 11, 25, in, in, in this story was the story of, of Lazarus. Oh, not, something happened here, I'm sorry. Just an interrupt. This came off. Do we need that? Oh, it's okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, so uh I am the bread of life. Okay, and then uh, I am the light of the world. Then Jesus again spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. The one who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And in John 10, 7, it says, so Jesus said to them again, truly, truly, I say to you, oh, okay, I am the door of the sheep, which I've said before, and I, somehow we went, we got back to that. And he went on to say, I am the good shepherd. Not only I am, I, am I the door to the sheepfold, but I'm the good shepherd who shepherds the sheep. And in uh in John eleven twenty five, Jesus said to her, "This was uh, Lazarus' sisters who had who had died, and uh, and and she went to meet Jesus, and they were talking, and 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 she said, Jesus said to her, "Your brother will 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 will, will rise again," and she said, "Well, I know he will." In 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 the uh uh. He, he'll rise in, in the hereafter. He'll come back. And he said, no, he will, he will rise again. So Jesus knew he was going to bring him back to life. And, um, and she said, yes, I know he will rise in, in the resurrection of, you know, in the end time. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even if he dies. And in John 14, 6, uh, he says, Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And in John 15, 1, he says, I am the vine and my father is the vine dresser. And so, you know, if you go back and count all of these, G Jesus made seven I am statements in the, in the book of John. Seven, and that is, we know that seven is a number for completion, and that his I am that is complete teaching of who God is. Amen. Is was in those in, immersed in those statements there, and so moving on, uh, in another passage here, excuse me, it relates to this message. For God did not send the Son into the world to judge the world, but so that the world might be saved through him. And in John 6, 68, Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have words of eternal life. And in this situation, this was the situation after the bread of life discourse that Jesus gave. And at the end of that, he said, that he who drinks my blood and eats my flesh will have eternal life. And, and you can't have it with, without me, with, without that. And then when he said that, some people, that was a hard saying for them. They couldn't take that. So they started to leave. And, um, and so many of his, uh, the people who were following him, they just got up and left. They said, well, we, no, that's too hard. We can't accept that. And, and then he said, Jesus said to the 12 who was still there, uh, he said, you know, do you want to leave too? And, and, and Peter made this statement. He answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have words of eternal life. Amen. And so 
Amen. Amen. And those were the I am statements from the book of John, whereas John revealed who God is, who he is, his word to him. On behalf of those given me, John 17, 9 through 10. I ask on their behalf. I do not ask on behalf of the world, but on the behalf of those whom you have given me, because they are yours. And all things that are mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. Um, now, we, we go back to John 16, verse 15. It says there, all things that the Father has are mine. This is why I said that he takes from mine and will disclose it to you. Okay, back to John 17, uh, verse 11. I am no longer going to be in the world. And yet they themselves are in the world, meaning the disciples. And I am coming to you, Holy Father. Holy Father, keep them in your name, the name which you have given me, so that they may be one just as we are. And verse 12, while I was with them, I was keeping them in your name, which you have given me. And I guarded them, and not one of them perished except the son of destruction, so that the scripture would be fulfilled. Now, we know who that son of destruction among them was. It was uh, Judas Iscariot. And again, he's uh, reverting back. He's, he's uh, showing the father in this prayer that he had given them the names. And we read all those names that he gave them in the context to which he gave them all those I am verses that represents who the Father is in, 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 in essence, in his divine attribute for those things, light of the world, the truth, the resurrection, the door to the sheep. All those were was divine attributes of, that Jesus possessed, which of course the Father possessed because Jesus got them from the Father. Disciples in the world. Okay. So John 17, verses 13 through 17. And it reads, But now I am coming to you, and these things I speak in the world, so that they may have my joy made full in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world just as I am not of the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but to keep them away from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. Amen. 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 And notice this, we go back and look at John 15, 3, and it says, you are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Now, there's an example of how Jesus was sanctifying the disciples through the words that he spoke. And they, through those words, received that from God. Matthew 5, verses 37, verse 37. But make sure your statement is yes, yes, or no, no. Anything beyond these is of evil origin. And that's so basically what he's saying, stay in the truth. Yes, yes, or no, no. There is nothing else except it would be evil. It would not be, it would be a distortion of the truth of evil origin. Okay, back to John 17, verse 18. Just as you sent me into the world, I also sent them into the world. 
And for their sakes, I sanctify myself so that they themselves also may be sanctified in the truth. I am not asking on behalf of these alone, but also for those who believe in me through their word. Now, brothers and sisters, this is getting to us. Now he's saying not only the disciples, but those who have come to believe through what through their word. And we study their word every day. Not every day, but yeah, when we read our Bible, if we read our Bible, we study it every day. But in our meetings and in, 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 um, in our messages, uh, we, we study his word. And that's what uh, uh, he's ref John is referring to here when he says, those who, who believe in him through their word. Now, we come in, we, we believe in Jesus because of what we learn about him through the words that those very disciples has written for us. And verse 21, that they may all be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you sent me. Future glory. And John 17, verses 22 through 26. And it reads, the glory which you have given me, I also have given to them so that they may be one, just as we are one. I in them, and you in me, that they may be perfected in unity, so that the world may know that you sent me, and you love me, just as you love me, and you love them, just as you love me. And so here, we see that uh, John is saying, Um, not only not only is this message for the disciples themselves, but for those of us, meaning us, who who uh, receive our word through them, just like they they receive the word from Jesus, and and they wrote the, the books of the Bible, and we receive these same words through them, and so and so, but. Here, Jesus is saying that he wants us all to be perfected in unity Amen. and to be as one. Not Amen. just them, but all of us. Amen. Verse 24, Father, I desire that they also whom you have given me be with me where I am, so that they may see my glory, which you have given me. For you love me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, although the world has not known you, yet I have known you, and these have known that you sent me. And I have made your name known to them and will make it known so that the love with which you love me may be in them and I in them. Amen. Amen. And now we'll move to the book of Ephesians, chapter four, verses one through six. Therefore, I, the prisoner of the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling with which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, being diligent to keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you also were called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. 
Amen. Now, if you mm. notice these, I, I refer to these as bonds of unity or these, these spiritual um, bonds. This is what bonds us together because it's, as it says, there is one body, body, the body of Christ. We participate in that same body as a, as a group, as the upper room fellowship. There's one body and that's the upper room. One spirit, the one that God gives us, the Holy Spirit. One hope. We all have, we share the same hope. We share the same Lord, Jesus Christ. One faith. We all have the faith that God, that the Lord put into us through his word. One baptism. This is one baptism that baptizes us and we participate in, in, in the uh, ritual that takes away our sin and the Lord gives us his spirit when we do that. He blesses us with the Holy Spirit whereas our sins have been washed away and now, now we, we, we can we bond with them, with him. So now we're with the one God and Father of all who is over all and through all. And that brings us to the conclusion. Okay, now, for that, we're going to go back to Exodus again. Exodus 33, verses, we'll begin in verse 18 through 19, and then we'll, we'll skip down to uh, chapter 34, and we'll read verse 6. And it says, Then Moses said, to, to the Lord, to God, please show me your glory. And he said, and God answered, answered him, I myself will make all my goodness pass before you and will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and I will show compassion to whom I will show compassion. Now notice that he said, I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. That is, he didn't speak. It wasn't words. He said, I'll proclaim it. I'll pass before you and proclaim it. And so, which means that when he passed before Moses, Moses just knew it. He just put it in his heart through his spirit. It was proclaimed. And now we'll, we'll move to uh, chapter 34, verse 6. And it goes on to say, Then the Lord passed in front of him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, compassionate and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in love and kindness and truth. Amen. Amen. And now we'll go to the book of John. John chapter one. And it says there in verse 14, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we saw his glory, glory as of the only son from the father. Full of grace and truth. And we'll move down to verse 17. And it reads, For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth was realized, were realized through Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Heavenly Father, Lord, we, we thank you for this word today and we thank you for this message and that we know that Jesus has given us your name. He has made your name known to us through these wonderful attributes that he's manifested in himself. And as we see them in him, we know that they are in you and they came from you and he came from you, Lord. And we thank you, Lord. And we, we just thank you that you 
You, you give us your love and you've given us this message that we may know your son and we may know you and we may know that you have our best interest in all times and in all things and your love is in our hearts and we thank you for your love, Lord, and we pray that you'll just continue to bless us with all these wonderful gifts and in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. To you. The Lord lift up his countenance before you and give you peace. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.